Hello and welcome back. In today's video, I'm trying to tune the performance of four by 16 gigabytes of a Pacer NOX RGB memory and tune it for the Ryzen 9 9900X. Now, as I said in my previous video, I am not a memory tuning expert like Buildzoid or the folks that are chasing the memory frequency world records. So I approach it from a layman's perspective. Basically, it means that we try to squeeze the most amount of performance using the least uh, amount of steps needed. In this video, I break down the Apacer NOX RGB 4x16 GB tuning process into four unique tuning strategies for beginner and advanced overclockers. However, before we jump into the tuning process, let's have a look at the hardware and the benchmarks that I'll be using in this guide. The Apacer NOX RGB kits I'm using today is part of a broader memory lineup with speeds up to DDR5-8000. It's basically a pair of the same kit I used in Scatterbencher number 95. The kit has an XMP 3.0 profile to enable higher performance. We'll get back to that in a minute when trying out the profile in OC strategy number one. The system we're overclocking today consists of the following hardware. We use Windows 11 and the following benchmark applications and games to measure performance and ensure system stability. Before we start tuning, of course, we have to check the performance at the default settings, which means that we don't make any changes in the BIOS except for enabling PBO to give the Ryzen 9 9900X a little bit more power headroom. The default memory subsystem configuration parameters for this system are as follows. Note that the default memory frequency is not the DDR5-6800 that we'd expect from installing two pairs of DDR5-6800 memory. And that's because running above AMD's validated and warranted speeds is of course overclocking. AMD Ryzen 9000's plan of record or POR defines the maximum memory frequency up to DDR5-5600 for one DIMM per channel or DPC and only up to DDR5-3600 for two DPC configurations. 3600, is this DDR4 memory? Here's the benchmark performance at stock. When running the OCCT memory stress test, the average dim temperature ranges from 42.1 to 48 degrees Celsius. The average dim voltage is 1.108 volts and the total dim power consumption is 6.9 watts. Of course, we can improve the system performance by leveraging this kit's XMP6800 profile. And that's exactly what we'll try to do in our very first overclocking strategy. But before that, make sure to locate the clear CMOS button. Pressing the clear CMOS button will reset all your BIOS settings to default, which is helpful if you want to start your BIOS configuration from scratch. In the first overclocking strategy, we simply try to leverage this kit's XMP profile by relying on ASUS's DOCP technology. ASUS Direct Overclock Profile, or DOCP, is an ASUS overclocking technology that aims to replicate the AMD Expo and Intel XMP technologies. Basically, it's a really useful tool in case your kit doesn't have an Expo or XMP profile because you can still increase the memory performance with the click of a single button. And it's also extremely useful in cases like this. We have an AMD Ryzen system, but a memory kit with an Intel XMP profile. Technologies like XMP allow memory vendors such as a pacer to program higher performance settings onto the memory sticks. Note that we have three DOCP options, DOCP1, 2, and DOCP tweaked. Only DOCP2 loads the memory profile as programmed onto the SPD, whereas DOCP1 and DOCP tweaked relies on motherboard auto rules to improve compatibility and or performance. For this overclocking strategy, we rely on DOCP2 so that we load the memory kit's full profile. Unfortunately, this wasn't stable at the rated speed of DDR5-6800, and I had to drop the operating frequency all the way down to DDR5-5800 
to have it pass my memory stress tests. Upon entering the BIOS, we reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to the default operation. Despite not being able to run at the XMP rated DDR5-6800, we're still running much faster than at stock. So we expect the performance to improve significantly, and that's exactly what we see across our benchmark suite. Generally, synthetic benchmarks benefit more, but we also see a decent uplift in compute. However, gaming workloads, not so much. The GeoMeme performance speedup is plus 16.95%, and we get a maximum benchmark improvement of plus 25.24% in local score. When running the OCCT memory stress test, the average dim temperature ranges from 50.8 to 61.2 degrees Celsius, the average dim voltage is 1.407 volts, and the total dim power consumption is 12.5 watts. In a second overclocking strategy, we further improve the memory performance by leveraging the AI overclock tuner options. In theory, we can choose between DOCP1 and DOCP tweaked. In essence, they kind of do the same thing. They load partially the memory profile that's on the memory sticks and then rely on motherboard auto rules to either enhance compatibility or stability or increase the performance. In Scatterbencher number 95, we found slight differences between DOCP1 and DOCP tweaked, but for our four DIM configuration, they apply the same adjustments. Since DOCP1 and DOCP tweaked do exactly the same thing for this particular configuration, I opted to enable DOCP tweaked because it sounds faster. Upon entering the BIOS, We reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to the default operation. The motherboard auto rules for DOCP1 and DOCP tweaked don't make a big change to the memory timings, so we don't expect a huge change in performance, though reducing waiting times to issue commands and access refreshed memory cells does help a bit. The GeoMean performance speedup improves by another 3 percentage points, and we get a maximum benchmark improvement of plus 28.93% in local score. When running the OCCT memory stress test, the average dim temperature ranges from 50.2 to 62.9 degrees Celsius. The average dim voltage is 1.406 volts, and the total dim power consumption is 12.8 watts. In the third overclocking strategy, we rely on the ACES memory presets technology to enhance the performance of our DDR5-5800 memory configuration. Now, ACES memory presets is an ACES overclocking technology that provides you with a number of presets for a variety of ICs and configurations. Typically, the memory presets will adjust some of the memory timings as well as the voltages. The ROG Crosshair X870E Hero motherboard sports 14 memory profiles for a variety of memory ICs and configurations. Unfortunately, there's only one preset available for Hynix 4x16GB configurations, so that's what we'll have to go with. Compared to the DOCP tweaked configuration, we find that many parameters have changed, especially the secondary memory timings. Upon entering the BIOS, Tuning the memory timings might not seem like a big change in our overall system configuration, but it can have a big impact on performance, as we've seen in previous Scatterbencher guides. The GeoMean performance speedup improves an incredible 17%, and we get a maximum benchmark improvement of plus 49.83% in Y-Cruncher. 
When running the OCCT memory stress test, the average dim temperature ranges from 53.9 to 65.5 degrees Celsius. The average dim voltage is 1.407 volt and the total dim power consumption is 13.8 watts. My original plan for the final overclocking strategy was to reduce the memory controller frequency to half that of the memory frequency and then push the memory frequency as high as possible. But that turned out to be quite challenging as I'll detail in a couple of seconds. So I ended up just trying to reduce the memory timings at DDR5-6000. With two dim Ryzen systems, the general practice of chasing high-speed memory is to drop the memory controller frequency to half that of the memory frequency using an option called uclock div one mode. That's what I did in Scatterventure number 95 when I used a pair of these NOX RGB sticks, and it's what I usually do in other AMD Ryzen Scatterventure guides as well. However, things are not as simple with four DIMM configurations. And that was already clear from OC strategy number one, as we had to run the memory well below its XMP rated DDR5-6800 speed, despite the memory controller already running at half the speed of the memory. Truth be told, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to run DDR5-7000 and above with four DIMMs. At some point, I could boot at that speed, but only with maxed out memory timings available. And even then, it crashes out after a couple of seconds. Tightening the timings by even 10% would result in a totally unstable system. At some point, I did manage to get Memtest86 to run for over one hour without errors, but I think that was a fluke. Based on my extremely limited experience tuning memory subsystems, my gut tells me that it's something related to the command address bus. Maybe not the physical part of it or the electrical part of it, but something related to the memory controller maybe. Disabling bank swap mode made things a little more stable, but it would have been nice to have a BIOS option to change the command RAID and see if that would help. Either way, the long story short is that high frequency memory, so over DDR5-7000, is not an option with this system or this configuration. So Instead, I decided to see if I could squeeze a little bit of extra performance at DDR5-6000 instead. Manually tuning the memory timings is a matter of just trying them one by one. At least it is for me. So we could go and try and understand each of the memory timings individually and then theorize which are the ones that we could drop by a certain amount for me, it's really just a matter of testing them. Here's my fine-tuned configuration for the DDR5-6000 setup. As you can see, the main difference is in the refresh and secondary timings. Also important to note is that I increased the memory voltage slightly from 1.4 volt to 1.435 volt. Then to help with the memory controller frequency at three gigahertz, so we run it in sync with DDR5-6000, I also increased the SOC voltage from 1.2 volt to the maximum allowed 1.3 volt. Lastly, I also looked at increasing the infinity fabric frequency. The fabric frequency or F clock is generated by the SOC PLL derived from a 100 megahertz reference clock input. The reference clock is multiplied by an F clock ratio, which you can configure in the BIOS. The standard operating frequency of the Infinity Fabric is 1800 MHz, but on many boards you'll find it runs at much higher frequencies when we use high-speed memory. For example, with DOCP tweaked, enabled, it's running at 1933 MHz. In Scatterbencher number 95, DOCP tweaked would run it at 2100 MHz in a two dim configuration. And as it turns out, it's also perfectly fine for a four dim configuration. Upon entering the BIOS,
We re-ran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to the default operation. Fine-tuning the memory timings should, in theory, provide additional performance. However, the changes we made are so minor that we shouldn't expect big swings. And that's what we see in our benchmark results. The GeoMean performance speedup improves by another 3 percentage points, and we get a maximum benchmark improvement of plus 55.25% in Y-Cruncher. When running the OCCT memory stress test, the average dim temperature ranges from 54.9 to 67.7 degrees Celsius, the average dim voltage is 1.441 volt, and the total dim power consumption is 14.3 watts. All right, let's wrap this up. Tuning a four dim configuration on an AMD Ryzen platform is quite challenging, especially if you also want high frequency memory. I couldn't really get DDR5-7000 to boot reliably, let alone be able to run it stably at a high performance configuration. So for me, I had to settle for DDR5-6000 with the memory controller in sync. Now, despite not being able to run this high frequency memory as I would like to, I'm still very satisfied about the performance improvement. And that's in part because the memory frequency at default is only 3600, 3600, but also because like we've seen in Scatterventure number 95, there's actually quite a lot of performance locked in the memory subtiming. So tuning those kind of gives you an automatic performance boost. Now, relying on manual tuning versus using those memory presets will give you, of course, some additional performance, especially if you go timing by timing and optimize them specifically, but not everyone will like um, the time versus reward payoff ratio. It takes quite a bit of time to go over all of these sub-timings, understand what's going on, try them and then verify stability as well. Anyway, that's it for this video. I want to thank you for watching, the YouTube members and the patrons for their continued support. If you want to read through my BIOS settings, I'll also put up a written version of this video up on my blog. If you have any questions or comments or feedback, feel free to drop it in the comment section below and see you next time.